Hello, my name is Mark Jackson, and I work here at Washington Regional as a urologist. I wanted to spend some time to talk about enlarged prostates, or BPH, benign prostatic hyperplasia. It's a very common disease in men and one of the top five diseases that we see. About half of us at age 40 will have some form of BPH. And then once we reach age 80, almost 90% of us have some degree of BPH. Our prostate is part of our urinary tract system. Our urinary tract consists of our kidneys high up in our abdomen behind our rib cage to help filter the bloodstream to pull out waste and make urine. That urine flows down through the ureters down to our bladder. And our urine sits there until we find a convenient time to go to the restroom. Once that we find that time, we are able to go find a bathroom, urinate through the prostate as the urethra goes through the prostate like a stem of an apple and, re and relieve ourselves. Our prostate sits right before our uh, rectum and allows for easy exam during a, during a doctor's visit. But what is the point of the prostate? Well, really it's a sex organ. Our prostate makes seminal fluid and that seminal fluid is ejaculated into the ejaculatory ducts in our urethra in the segment called the prostatic urethra. Due to it being a sex organ, it has a high relationship to testosterone. Our prostate will start to grow at a young age once we have a surge of testosterone during puberty. But as long as we live in our adult life making testosterone, our prostate will grow. Why does it cause so many problems? Well, mainly the bladder likes to empty urine through an open tube, like any other kind of fluid dynamics. However, when the prostate grows, and has that restriction in the urethra, it makes it very difficult for the bladder to empty. It increases the pressure in the bladder. And that's where a lot of our problems from BPH come from, is that increased pressure. We can get to where our bladder muscle has to thicken and become really muscular to get that urine out. And that increased pressure can cause blowouts in the bladder between the muscle fibers. They're called diverticulum. Some can be very small, some can be very, very large, and even be the size of our bladder. A lot of times as our prostate grows, it needs blood flow. Those blood vessels that the prostate makes are sometimes very fragile and can bleed very often. Unlike when you have a, a clot that forms on your outside of your skin, gets really hard, clots inside the bladder are very wet and very soft, but it can get very large where it makes it hard to urinate, requiring you to go to the ER to get a Foley catheter. Due to poor emptying of the bladder, you can have re your recurrent urinary tract infections, which can be very difficult to treat due to the fact that you can't empty out all that bacteria in the urine stream. So the antibiotics really don't have a chance to really work well. Those infections can also cause bladder stones, or bladder stones can also form just the fact that the urine has salts in it. Those salts can precipitate in the, in the bladder and form these stones that can become so large that you can't pass them on your own like a kidney stone. Sometimes we'll have to perform surgeries, such as laser surgeries, or if the stones are large enough, even robotic surgery. Finally, the bladder is not the only thing affected. When you have a bladder full of urine, and you have kidneys draining urine into a full bladder, you can get back up and cause renal blockage. When your kidneys are blocked, you can have renal failure and ultimately need dialysis. Because of BPH's effects on the urinary tract, we have a lot of our symptoms. Symptoms can vary from getting up at night or nocturia two to three times at night, and before you know it, sometimes we're getting up five or six times at night. Because of that coaptation of the urethra to where it restricts the stream, it makes a weaker stream, or you could have a weak stream from a poor bladder from all that pressure it has been building up in the bladder. You can also have urgency because of that bladder is unhappy and over muscularized. So you're going to the bathroom every 30 minutes. And you're going so often that when you finally get there to try to start your stream, you have hesitancy where you can't start. And then when you start that stream, sometimes it just stops all of a sudden, or at worst, post void dribbling, and now your pants are wet. There are multiple treatments, but they really start with your primary care. By seeing your doctor once a year, he may perform a prostate exam, or get blood tests. Blood tests would be like a PSA, a prostate-specific antigen, which is a level that is made in the prostate and at high levels will make us concerned for a malignancy. You may also have a kidney level drawn to look to see if your kidneys are working properly. Urine tests will help rule out any blood in the urine or any other infections. If your prostate exam is abnormal or any of your urine tests are abnormal, 
you may be sent to see us for more for other testing, such as a Euroflow to see how fast your urine stream is, or even a bladder scan to make sure you're truly emptying your bladder. If your PSA is high, we may recommend an MRI of your prostate to get a better look at the anatomy of the prostate. Finally, if your symptoms are severe enough, we may offer medication. There are different types of medications, some that relax the uh, smooth muscle of the prostate to have a stronger stream, other medications that help relax the bladder muscle so that you're not getting up so often at nighttime or running to the bathroom so often. Other medications actually try to reverse time, meaning that we try to inhibit the prostate from using certain forms of testosterone, kind of the food that made the prostate grow in the first place. By starving the prostate of that type of testosterone, you can actually shrink the prostate over a period of time. But finally, there may even be some surgical therapy that may be needed, but fortunately is not the vast majority. What's important is the knowing the symptoms so you can find the warning signs and prevention is key so you don't have any bladder or urinary tract damage. Finally, we just need to remember this is a very common problem with very common solutions that we see every day. Don't hesitate to come see us because BPH isn't something that you should have to live with and you shouldn't have to worry about where the next bathroom is.